Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Mountain Treasures project. Ooh. Oh, we have Michael here working the cameras. Hello everybody. And you guys may have noticed that uh, Michael's actually been the one filming the last couple of months and that's because uh, Keenan has been transferred to our sister company, Missouri Star Quilt Company. And so we will miss him. We love painting with him and he was just a joy to have around. Um, but sometimes things change, you know, and we have Michael here who will be helping us. And, um, I just wanted to say thanks to Keenan for all of his hard work. Thanks Keenan. Thank you, Keenan. We get to still see him. Yeah. So. <laughs> and his baby. And his cute little baby, Coda, who our daughter forgets her, his, the baby's name all the time that it's Coda and calls him Taquito. <laughs> <laughs> She's seven. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're going to be doing this project in four steps. So our very first step is we are going to do a sketch of where all of these things go. As you've noticed, there's no outline with this. We're gonna be drawing this, but I know you guys can do it. Our second step is we are gonna be doing our first painting layer on all of our objects. Our third step is we'll, we'll go back in and do like the more details on all of our, or the second layer on all of our objects. And then the fourth step is the details. <sighs> Sorry about that. Okay, I'm using two paintbrushes, around two and around six. We have five colors. Uh, we are using black, sepia, azure blue, deep yellow, and fuchsia. Um, if the if you don't know the brand, the brand is Dandelion Paint Company, which is our in-house paint brand. It's a liquid watercolor, which means they're dye base, which makes them very vibrant. And dye base paints work better with. Um, this kind of like cellulose paper. I used Holbein soft tape to tape down my paper, which is my favorite, favorite tape. It's fabulous. And I think that's everything. All right, let's do it. All right, if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Okay, so the theme of this box is the mountains are calling because I was thinking about like in summertime when it starts to warm up and that's when you wanna go hiking and camping and traveling and experiencing new things. And as I was thinking through the feelings and what maybe you would do during that time, some of my favorite things and my kids' favorite things is to look and find little treasures along the way, whether you're hiking or maybe you're just out in your yard and you find um, you know, a feather or just the most perfectly smooth stone or like a piece of driftwood or something like that. So this project is all about celebrating these small treasures that we might find and how um, we can do a little painting of them. Okay? All right. Also, when we take our girls camping, everything is a fairy blank, a fairy rock, yes. a fairy feather. Yes. And fairy stick. <laughs> Look at these fairy flowers. It's so cute. Okay. So I'm going to roughly lay out the placement of my objects on my paper. Now, please know that you have every right to adjust this to whatever you want to paint. Like maybe you found some very specific feathers that you want to paint. Do just feathers, do just rocks. Like this is your project and your painting. You have all of the right to make it your own. So don't worry about what I'm doing. <laughs> I just realized that's funny to say in a tutorial. <laughs> don't worry about what I'm doing, okay. Okay, so. I have a feather kind of coming up here. So I'm just gonna like do the center line of it. And I'm gonna think about how far out it's gonna go to. So, okay, there's my feather. I'm gonna do a rock here. And these are just basic shapes. Notice that I'm not doing hard, like very defined lines. I'm lightly sketching. One, I want it to be light so it doesn't show through my water color as much. And two, it's just a good practice to know that there is like flexibility in what it is that you're painting and you're drawing. So even though we're roughly laying this out, as we paint, things might shift around and that's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna do like a twig or, I like the driftwood. I'm gonna put that here. And again, I'm not doing the full flushed out thing. It's just a reminder of there's a line, there's a line. And then we'll do like a plant here. Do a rock here and a feather here. And then as we paint this, some things are gonna get bigger or smaller and so we might have to add or take away or adjust, okay? 
but that's basically it. And you guys can probably barely see that, but you can see it. They can see it. Okay. Again, just light texture. Okay. So I'm going to start with my feather and I like to start, I'm going to grab this black and I'm going to add water to it to make it a really, really light gray. Cause if you look at the centers of feathers, depending on the feather, they're usually a lighter color. This part is. So I'm going to use gray and using my round two, there's my feather. And then I'm going to use my round six. And what I like to do is I like to shape it using water and then just drop in color. Um, so let's grab some of this. I'll just grab some of this gray so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now, when it comes to the feather, and I have one here as an example, but they come in so many different shapes and sizes that I don't want you to stress, but it kind of comes to a point and then they kind of like smooth out, like kind of round out like this. And then you can get chunks that are separated. So it kind of like angles, angles. And then it curves back down in. And then while it's wet like this, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the sepia, sepia, maybe a little bit of black too to kind of combat that orangeness. We can just drop in this color and it's just going to kind of diffuse out. Um, I have a really fun fact on today's episode of Wow, That's Illegal with Michael Cray. Are you ready? Yeah. It is illegal to possess the feather of a North American bird under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. What? You are not supposed to pick feathers up. So I'm teaching people to paint things that they shouldn't even have. They could Google the feather. Okay. Please don't... Uh, you guys obviously don't have any feathers in your possession. Yeah. Because that's illegal. You'll go to Feather Jam. So... <laughs> it's funny. I was just reading about it because I remember seeing something about it a while ago and thinking like, haha, that can't be real. You pulled out a feather and I went like, oh my gosh, let me look this up. It is. It's a real thing. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Wow. I had no idea, as you can tell. <laughs> I don't think that's a native North American bird feather. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so I did the left-hand side, and I'm going to stop. You see how at the bottom of this feather there are, like, these really light curly cues, kind of? The down. The down? Is yeah. that what it's called? I think down. Yeah, I mean, let's call it that for all intents and purposes. Okay. Perfect. And then I'm, I'll do that later. I'm going to do the right hand side now. So basically I'm going to try and like mirror. And then whenever you want, you can have a little break. So it basically you're going to leave a thin line and then keep going. And you can have as many breaks as you want. Sometimes there, it's so like clumped together, it creates a smooth line. And then sometimes feathers get all wonky to where it has these chunks. You see that? So just paint whatever you feel comfortable painting. Okay. And then while it's wet like this, I'm gonna drop in some strong color. So I'm gonna grab some black, mix it with my sepia, maybe a tiny blue and then while it's wet right here I'm just gonna drop it in and kind of let that color just like bleed out I love painting feathers yeah really beautiful it's so fun and um, we'll go back in and do more details but this is my favorite part just kind of like getting a little bit of color on the tips I'm going and dropping color in on the left hand side. Your feather might be um, wet enough still that it's diffusing. If it's not, then I just go back in and kind of like wet the area, kind of just let it bleed out. Okay. 
we're being nostalgic in a previous video about um, early, early Sarah Cray work. Mm -hmm. I remember a dream catcher that you painted with with feathers on the bottom that was a hit. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send that to you. You can put it up right there. That was probably one of my first illustrations that I put on my Etsy shop was that dream catcher, which was fun. Kind of whimsy. Okay. And then now I'm going to take my two. I'm going to use that same kind of gray. And if you don't have any more left, just make some more. And I'm going to do those like kind of curly cues. So I'm going to do some thin lines coming out like this. And then some kind of like go forward, some go on top. If you want to do it in that brown color instead, that's fine. I've noticed that for the most part, it's white. So that's why I'm just doing it in gray to kind of give the illusion that it's the white part of feathers. Okay. And we'll go back and do a second layer. But for now, we're gonna call that good. Okay, so that's feather number one. And now we're gonna do our like first stone. And the beautiful thing about like stones or rocks are they come in all different types of colors. So you can literally mix almost any color and it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna try like a gray. So I'm gonna get some black, add some water to it. Let's put a little bit of blue in there. And maybe some of this brown. Ooh, that's pretty. So for this stone, I'm going to use my round six and I'm using the light value, I'm going to create an oval shape with the lightest value in the middle. So I kind of take my color and I go along the edge and then I use water to spread it out. And remember, it can be wonky. It does not have to be, nor should it be, a perfect circle. Actually, that's kind of eggy looking, but that's okay. I'm going to stick with it. And then I'm going to pick up more of this gray color and along the bottom here and the sides, I'm going to start putting in this value. And what we're trying to do here is create a little bit of dimension with our rock. Do you mean your fairy rock? <laughs> with my fairy rock, exactly. <laughs> So we're trying to show that this is thick and it's rounding away from us. So we need to have a darker value to show that. And then depending on everything, you can have little marks on your rock. I like to do um, little dots while it's still wet because they'll just kind of blend out and it just gives it a different like texture, like an uneven finish. That's a granite rock, I could tell. Oh, yeah? You're doing great. Oh, thank you. Due to the rock act, it's also illegal to pick rocks up. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I guess it's important to say that while we might find something really lovely and want it for ourselves, um, it can hurt places by just continuing to take from them. So this is where we can take notes, we can take pictures. I like to have a little notebook when I go places and I can, like when I went to Spain, I really wanted to remember the color of the landscape. So I just did swatches just right there. And I like wrote down like the color of the cactus, the color of the stone, like that kind of stuff. So then if we want to recreate it, we can. We don't have to have it. Okay, well, I really like that little stone. So I'm going to leave that, and that looks great. Now I'm going to move on to my piece of driftwood, and I included this one because one of my, my favorite memories is when I go with Michael's family to um, Fort Bragg on the California in California. His dad will grab pieces of wood and do some carvings. Turn them into mermaids and stuff. Yeah, and I just think that's so fun. And it's just something he kind of always does and is working on just when we go there. And so when I thought about like going to places on family vacation or trips or taking time with my family and finding these treasures. Wait, are you allowed to grab driftwood? Probably, yeah, 
I think the mic- <laughs> the feather thing I think keeps people from like hunting birds for feathers. Oh, and leaving them okay, already. okay. But I don't know. I, I didn't write the law. So that I wanted to include that because that was something that was um, memorable to me. And so if you have something like that where you're just like my my youngest always grabs black rocks or something like that, it's really fun to incorporate those sentimental moments into our artwork. So I'm gonna grab some brown. And I want it to be kind of desaturated, like kind of like that gray look. So let's add some black into there. And let's add some yellow and some fuchsia. Let's just see what color we're getting. Yeah, maybe a little bit more yellow. And maybe some more black to kind of just gray it all out. And some water, because I want some different washes. There we go. Okay, so using this lighter brown, I'm going to do just kind of this jagged line here. And I'm using my dry brush technique. And this can be whatever shape you want. Talking about John Cray, um, my dad. He's an interesting case to me because I don't know if it's generational or what, but he's one of the most artistic people I know. He's mm -hmm. very talented, but he would never, ever, ever say that he is. Yeah. And he doesn't do it for fun. There's just like little trinkets around the house that I've seen that he's he's drawn or doodled. With crayon. They have a painting yeah. that he did, or it's, not a painting, but he took crayon on a brown paper bag and did this like beautiful, beautiful landscape. Yeah. So when we make these videos for Let's Make Art, I, in my mind, secretly picture the John Crays of the world. I hope we reach them so that they can go like, oh, I am artistic. I can do this, you know? And actually, if you've been painting with us a long time, I think he painted with me. Oh, very early days. When day. we did, when we used to do lives every week. Um, I can't remember which project it was, but he was so hard on himself. And that was hard to watch because he's so talented. And um, I, it's just easy to be critical of ourselves. And Okay, so I'm just going to keep grabbing different like yellows and browns and just keep layering on top using dry brush. So it's not a smooth line and we want those like imperfections. And if you don't know how to like dry off your brush, you can always pat it on your paper towel. Or flick it wildly. <laughs> That's like what my dog does. Just whip the paintbrush around. <laughs> and then I'm going to use some dark brown just to kind of like tighten up the edges. It's out of my control, but my stomach is growling very loudly, and I'm sorry if you hear it. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty good. I might lengthen it, actually. Make it go a little bit skinnier at the top. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna move on, and I wanted to do just like a little plant. I recently got my very own flower press. And it's been super fun to like forage on my own property and grab some things. So I wanted to call attention to that. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to mix um, the deep yellow and the azure blue together to get green. And I'm going to add some brown in there to neutralize that green because that green is very vibrant. And if you want to leave it vibrant, that's fine. I want it to feel a little bit more um, natural. Like it's been pressed, you know? And then I'm going to take my two and I'm going to follow my drawing here. If you need to adjust based off of what you've painted so far, go ahead and adjust. But I feel good about my spacing. I'm just going to do a curved stem like so. I googled the driftwood legality just to be sure. Yeah. Huh? It says it's, I mean, state to state is different, but federally it's fine. Okay. From a public beach. Okay. So after I do my stem, I'm going to do my top leaf. And then if you want some serration, 
you can just go and add these kind of like little wispy lines with your two kind of coming out like so. And don't be afraid to let there be variation in color. So while it's wet, if you want to drop in a little bit of yellow or maybe a little bit of blue, feel free to play with it. And you'll notice that I'm placing the leaves a little bit off of the stem. And that's because I want to do a thin stem connecting them. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space. And I'll add the stem at the end. And you can have some of your leaves be a lighter value, a darker value. Remember, variation is key here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can work quickly. Sometimes when we force ourselves to work quickly, that's when we have to make decisions fast. That's when, um, I don't know, we don't obsess or try and make it perfect. It gives us a little bit of room to be, I don't know, imperfect and human. the serration and I like to do a few at a time sometimes what I'll do too is I will um, like just pick up a strong color and then just like keep adding until that color runs out so there's a natural change in the values I always want you to call those serrated leaves toothy toothy if you want to add some teeth The botanical term. I I know that there is. I can never remember what it actually is. I know you told me before. It's but toothy. I, well, I know oh. now because you just <laughs> said it. I mean, like when I went to talk about it, I couldn't remember. <laughs> like I just said. It. It's, toothy. it's toothy. That's it. <laughs> You can also do this part using your six, like the body of the leaf, and then do the details with the two. But sometimes I don't feel like switching back and forth within the brushes. You can make them symmetrical, which means that it's this like twins on each side or asymmetrical, which means it's not. This is your painting and your little leaf that you're making. And I'm actually going to leave that. I'm not gonna do another row because I don't want it to go into my um, driftwood there. So I'm just gonna end it right there. Okay, let's do another feather. Actually, I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my stone first, and then that's gonna inform me of where my feather is going to go. So I think like basically what I want is I want to make sure that my stone and my feather end on a, a line almost. Like you see how the edges of these are fairly close. They kind of line up a little bit. Yes. I want the same thing happening here. So if I do, so here's my leaf. So if I want probably my stone to be about here, maybe I'll make that taller. And that way I can do this guy up here. Which means that if I do my feather, the end of it needs to be about here. So the center is gonna go like this. And then maybe like that. So you can absolutely draw more as you guys go to get that, um, to make sure that you like the shape and how things are lining up. Okay. Now let's do a more brown stone here. So I'm gonna take this brown, mix it with some gray, maybe some of this 
green, basically a brownish gray. And I'm doing kind of roundish again. But remember, they can be anything, any shape. They could be jagged. I just like, I wanted to do some smooth stones. River rocks. Yeah. Okay, that feels good. I'm gonna let that be. And let's go ahead and do my little stone up here while I have it. And I'm gonna let this one be a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna just do black and azure. Maybe a little bit of brown. But sometimes if you do some like interesting washes, like layer it or maybe like a layer of brown and then a layer of blue on top, you can get some gorgeous colors. And just kind of along the edge or the bottom, put in that darker value and just kind of let it move. Let it do its thing. Cool. Okay, feather time. I'm gonna grab my two, grab some gray, and same thing, I'm going to do my stem first. I'm calling it a stem, I'm not sure if that's the correct term. I'm gonna look. Okay, perfect. Now this feather, I'm gonna paint using water and then I'm gonna drop, see how there's kind of like stripes? So the colors I'm gonna drop in while it's wet and then I'll go back in after it's dry and do these kind of like dots and the darker lines in between. So it's kind of like this wet on wet and then we go back in with wet on dry. So let me actually make sure I have my colors ready to go. So I'm gonna make sure I have like a reddish brown we can even add a little bit of fuchsia in with the sepia to make it more. Yes? Um, teacher, the answer is quill. Oh, the quill is the center part. Yeah, it's, a, it's called a calamus or quill. Okay, so we put in the quill using gray. I'm gonna mix like a yellowish brown and then I already have black. Okay, that just feels like... Eat. Each side of the feather, the feathery part, is yeah. the vein, outer and inner vein, V-A-N-E, like a weather vein. Oh, okay. Veins and quills. So we're going to paint the veins using just water. There you go. So it's kind of, and you can use, you can Google pictures, but it kind of points at the top. And then it kind of like widens. And honestly, some of the most fun I've had has just been Googling pictures of feather and of feathers and painting them in my sketchbook. Like there really is so much variation to the shape and the color and the size that it's just kind of fun. It's a fun challenge. The furry part at the bottom is called the after feather. The after feather? Yeah. That's funny. Okay, so I'm taking this kind of brown red sepia that I mixed and putting it in chunks. And you're seeing that it's moving on its own and that's okay, that's kind of what I want. I just kind of want it to bleed around. And we actually have a tutorial that is just like feathers, which is one of my favorite projects. If you have never tried it, it's super fun. And then I'm just kind of thinning out the area where the quill is. A little chunk of brown in there. Okay. And then while it's wet like this, I can even shape it a little bit. So if it's like, let's smooth out this line. Let's have a little section of feather kind of come out here. Okay. 
And then using the gray or the brown or whatever color you want, you can put the after feather in. It's so much better with the real names. <laughs> after feather. The after feather. So this is where you're just going to do kind of like wispy curved lines, a little bit of curl to them. Okay, so now we have like our layout and we're basically going to go in and then any areas that we feel like could do with um, another layer of value, we can put those in now. So I'm going to go like my beech wood here. I'm going to go in with this dark kind of brown and I like that it kind of had this like seam in it, you know. So I'm going to put some of that in and maybe I'm going to do some more dry brush here. So just whatever you want to add to make it feel a little bit more um, dimensional. Bougie. No. <laughs> dimensional. <laughs> and basically we just don't want it to seem super flat and objects look flat when there's just one value. So that's why we just got to go in there and add some different stuff. And I'm going to actually, on this stone right here, I'm going to try the dry brush technique on the stone. Let's just see how that goes. I love it. Cool, right? Yeah. And then on this bottom right one, I think I lost a little bit of my value. So to mix it up, I'm just going to drop it in and let's do some more of these little kind of like speckles. Maybe I actually wanted to paint an egg here and that's why I just keep doing like egg shape with speckles. <laughs> It's about lunchtime. <laughs> okay, that feels better. This one actually looks pretty good. I might, I think I might just do one more swoop. Kind of just along that base. Like that. Cool. And then when it comes to the feathers, You, this is where we can just kind of like get a darker, like one click darker value and just kind of like shape some of these details a little bit, bit more. Because if you look at these feathers, even if it's a smooth edge right here, sometimes we still see a little bit of a line. You see that? Yeah. So I'm just going to go in with my two and just on some of here and there. We're going to do some thin marks just to give the hint of that there's lots of little things making this up. So now we're kind of combining, we're like in that transition period between step two and step three. Step three is like details and step two is just kind of like um, adding a darker value to give it form. So I feel good about the darker values that I added and now I'm kind of like going into more of a detail. That might have been too dark. And if something's too dark, you can just take a damp brush and blend. Okay. 
And sometimes I like to go in and just kind of like along the side of the quill, do like a darker. There were some quills that I looked at while painting a bunch of different feathers where I feel like it like changed color where some of it stayed white and then as it went through the feather it turned to like black or gray. So that there is to show you that there's freedom. And sometimes I like just a pop of color too. So I'm just grabbing some of this deep yellow and just kind of on the ends. Okay, now on these leaves, I don't need to do much. If anything, I might just add just a thin detail vein down the middle, if it needs it. You might be looking at yours and saying, actually, it looks pretty good without it. And then on this feather, this I think is the best part. This is where I get to, we get to add like the black part in between these color changes. So I'm just using my ground two and like a dark brown. And just putting in these kind of stripes. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason to where I'm putting them, just wherever it feels good to. I'm sure that there are actual like feathers that have, that are very specific of like, this is the dark area, this is where you put the dots, but I'm just being playful. And then putting some spots in. And if it feels a little bit too sharp next to like the softness of the wash underneath, sometimes I'll just take some water and just kind of blend out that edge. And sometimes just putting a hint of color on the end of these after feathers makes them kind of pop a little bit. That's it. It's beautiful. That's our project. I um, think this idea is so fun. I think it. there's so much opportunity here where you can say, there's some pieces that are treasures to me that I just love, something that's meaningful, that um, it would just be fun to pull it out and paint it. And it doesn't even have to be rocks and feathers and leaves. But just these little trinkets or maybe something small where you can just put it right next to you on your paper and say, what is the shape? What is this color doing? How can I, how can I look at this? Take time out of my day to stop and look at this feather and notice the spaces in between. Notice how sometimes there's a little bit of a curl that comes in or how these soft feathers are so thin and kind of splay out. And so I guess my hope with this project is that um, you can take some time to stop and really look at um, some things and maybe try and paint them and just see what happens. So thank you so much for painting with me. Michael, always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.